And we're live with uh, episode number seven of the Waiting Room Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Rush, with our <laughs> usual uh, contributors, uh, Brendan De Cruz, Fabian Mark Peter, Asmil Uner, and our guest this evening, Mr. Ben Liu. Thank you, Ben, for Hello. appearing on the podcast. Yay. Hi. As I was saying hey, earlier, I thought it was a shitless party, man. This is a shitless no, party. That may be. Uh, I'm still recommending all this. Second most dressed down there. My other. Maybe I'm a in my party my... you're talking about. Ben's uh, uh, the editor for uh, yeah, Juice Magazine, yeah, plus one of the crazy members of Panda Head yeah, Crew. So, uh, Ben, uh, usually on the podcast, we start off with a guest uh, giving us their kind of journey in music, so or in whatever field of media or arts that they do. So, why don't you kick off with telling us how you got into playing music and how <laughs> did your journey start? Uh, I was in the fetal position. <laughs> yeah. And like uh suddenly like I saw an opening like a like a light coming from a tunnel and then a hand and then like uh, uh, uh you know next thing I know I'm a rock star. Okay. <laughs> 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 right. Okay, uh obviously I didn't plan what to say. Well my journey Freestyle. as a musician uh okay well i came from uh i came from i came from uh uh well i don't i don't think i i i came from a musical family but music was in my family and uh, my father used to like music and stuff like that and from a young age uh got into uh some oldies beatles and stuff like that and also like guns and roses <laughs> from my dad and then uh, i guess it yeah and then i guess it's cool you know i went through that gen x uh phase whatever you know whatever that gen x liked in the in the 90s yeah uh which is mainly like guitar driven rock music alternative rock, grunge, uh, metal, and so on. And uh, and then uh, mm. punk, you know. Uh, punk was like, uh, I guess, like the first kind of uh, music with a philosophy attached to it that, um, that I got into and, mm. and then, you know, the band, Band's Bitches. Should yeah. I get into that? Yeah. Yeah. Do I want to get into that? <laughs> we yes. Just... Do you want to get into <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Asmil, Asmil. Uh, you're you're Asmil... the guest man. It's, it's, it's an open. Oh, okay. It's an open okay. Forum. Okay. Go for it if you okay. want. Okay. Okay. So um, I uh, I went to a music college. <laughs> Let me oh, guess. Shit. Uh, yeah. Let I, me guess. I, I, I yes, I studied <laughs> jazz, classical. Uh, what? Yeah, tra- training. <laughs> you know, your solfege, do re mi fa so la ti do do mi do, uh, whatever. And uh, uh, you you're I supposed really to go to the US, to... man. Oh yes, sorry. Yeah, I was remember supposed that to period. Go to the <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was supposed to to like uh go to Berkeley. Uh, Berkeley College of Music, where John Mayer dropped out, <laughs> <laughs> or he graduated from there. I don't know. River Kumos <laughs> came from there. Well, uh, a lot of musicians, a lot of musicians. Well, I know, I know, a, so, like a, I know so many musicians from yeah. here, Malaysia, who went to Berkeley. From ah, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So a, lot of, so a lot of musicians. Yeah. So yeah, I went there. So like, uh, I was supposed to go there, but I didn't because uh, September 11 happened. And Malaysia was uh, blacklisted. Uh, Any, well, yeah, every Muslim country was back, blacklisted. After every September. Muslim country was blacklisted. It was probably because I I, I wasn't a Muslim, and uh, um, they still denied my visa. And like, um, I guess it's just a blanket thing. And yeah, like, uh, like they were just afraid of uh, anybody. Yeah, so I, I just basically um, that happened, and uh, I dropped out of college, and I. Um, well, in between some jobs here and there, I was like working, working as a guitar teacher. At the same time, uh, I started a band again with 
uh, oh shit. See, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping here. It's, it's don't a worry. long ass don't worry freaking about it. story. Don't, uh, don't worry about it. Is, don't be worried about it. There's so jumping. many right, just keep going. phases. And, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to jump back to <laughs> high school then. So in high school, yeah, high, school then, man, uh, high school, high school, there's this guy called uh, CK. And uh, you might know him as Chichak Kobe. <laughs> no, so he's uh, also ego. And he's, he was the uh, guy, um, our bassist in Ben's pitches. Uh, he wrote Kotak Babulu. And I met him in high school at, uh, in the canteen. He was drinking Bali. And somebody told me that this kid, he's more, uh, he's more uh, what do you call, vulgar than you. And you know, <laughs> that is a challenge. So I, I told him, hey, what's that you're drinking? It looks like sperms. <laughs> and then you're like, that's that. that's okay. And then uh, we became friends uh, and started a band with another guy in high school. And then they kicked me out of this band. And later on after college or so, like in, in college, I, 2003 was, was our first gig actually in January. Like it was like, was it on New Year's Day or something like that? I don't know. Wait, Are you asking me? Wait, is this Mahade Mohawk? Uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 band name, man. No, Ben's Bitches. Ben's oh, okay, bitches but, but the band before that was Mahade's Mohawk, right? Oh, yes. The band before <laughs> that was called Mahade's Mohawk. <laughs> yes. Named after Dr. Mahade at the nah, time. For Juang, for Juang. And they were saying like, you know, for Juang at the time, Dr. Mahade was saying that, you know, all oh, the punks and all that, you know, gejala bro, you know, it's yeah, bad man. shit. And then they say the skinheads are bad and all that. And then, like, I'm like, what? You know? I hang out with the Malay skinhead guys and they are normal people, uh, you know. In fact, some of them are not even <laughs> skinheads. They just happen to shave their head because he was the trend back then. It was David Beckham. <laughs> you know? He's a natural sexual like that. Everybody, all the guys were oh, became David Beckham, you know, and they shaved their head. La. So, yeah. the football jersey. Okay, la. you know, they're not skinheads, skinheads, you know. But people were like afraid because they were growing in numbers. <laughs> so anyways, um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, Mahdi's Mohawk uh, was the high school band, and then uh, they kicked me out of the band, uh, obviously because I was very late to practice a lot. And, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then like, um, hold on, <laughs> is it every Malaysian late they practice is not just a standard routine? Like, why would they kick? So- hey, you don't simply ah uh, every Malaysian. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm not late anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have a tardiness problem later on in life. But I, 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 I was, a, I was a bad kid. I was just a bad kid. <laughs> I think you back now, you know. My wife, you know, photo, photo, photo. Our, <laughs> my wife up there, right? So, a long time ago, like you know, it, it, I was I was, <laughs> I was a bad kid. It was, but it was cool. We used to jam on top of this motorbike uh, workshop, and so you can make a lot of noise. There wasn't much soundproofing in that studio, and it was like ten ringgit an hour or nine ringgit an hour, and like uh, it was good times. Uh, smoke a cigarette. Um, Buy a can of beer, you know, you don't have money, so you just buy beer and then drink and <laughs> cigarettes and play music in the studio. Uh, at you know, 14, 15. <laughs> Anyways, um he, he, they kicked me out of the band and then like um later on in before 2003, Azmil joined the band, but uh this is what happened. CK came back to me and he said that uh he had been in another band, not Mahate's Mohawk, uh, <laughs> when, when uh, you know, in, in college, and it was called, I think it was called Stone Angel, whatever, so they, sorry, I was, I was a bit distracted, it's my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Hi! Hey! <laughs> yeah. Get on, get on. Uh, sorry. All going into bands here. Okay. Anyways, where was I? I was ah, then about... you see K. Ah, uh, yeah. So okay, okay. So like, uh, in in two before two thousand and three, he, he was in this other band. I was in college, so he was in college, and then like, uh, he was in this other band. Uh, and they kicked him out of the band. <laughs> oh, I guess 
being an asshole or whatever. <laughs> and then uh, he came back, came back to me, came back crying to me, you know. <laughs> Who is this? He came back crying. Yeah, yeah he came he back came. crawling to me, crawling and crying to me. Like, oh, man. You know, and then, like, like you said, uh, let's start a band again. I said, okay. <laughs> Under one condition, the band has to be called Bad Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, can never funny. kick me out of the band again, you know. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and also, uh, what do you call? There was another band around at the time called John's Mistress. I thought it was just funny to just like play on their name. Play on those words, out. yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, just to, just to play on John's Mistress and all that. I hate all this uh, anonymous, <laughs> ambiguous. <laughs> Uh, bands and stuff like that. Like, who is John's mistress? None of your songs are about John's mistress. So, like, <laughs> bands bitches, you know. Well, that was the second. That was second. That was second the nineties. The band names were just meant to be. Or there was yeah. like, like a band name has been so ambiguous. Yeah, well, Marcy's you know, playground. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was oh. a good. That was a good time. That you whole, remember that uh, band? Oh, yeah. yeah, nice stupid playground and all that. You yeah, know, the name I mean, like, nice stupid but, playground. But but, but, but yeah. they they were good bands. They were some good yeah. bands, and 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 uh, I I, I like some of them, and and uh, I think it was a good time if you were peaked, that like you already had a good band and stuff like that. You guys were tight and all that. It would probably be easy to be signed around that time. That era. yeah, well, I, and I thought that, that that was like what we saw, and we saw like a lot of these like uh, local bands, OEG and all that. Going big, playing in malls. I saw them at Subang Parade, and I was like, "Oh, I want to be that! <laughs> I want to be a rock star and play at Subang Parade. At least it looks doable, you know." Yeah, I didn't think like, "Oh, I'm gonna play in, like Madison Square Garden or something like that." It's like Subang, Subang Parade. Parade. Was the, was the, <laughs> That's it. To... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, no, we never played at Subang Parade after that, but. Okay. We played it. So we played we play a pyramid play the once. Yeah. So we played that. We even we, we, we played at the club. Stage, <laughs> we played at the play club. club. So when did Asmol join the band? So oh, yeah, that, that was where. We, that's where I diverted from all this like about ten minutes ago. <laughs> he joined in uh, 2003, right after I gave the band's name. Yeah, I came back and, and we were I, I want. I want to just uh, come. Uh, you, you you told me there's a gig happening. I want to come and see you guys play. Yeah. And Alex was supposed to be a drum, right? Maria Commission. Then he said cannot. Then I joined. I I, I wanted to see you guys play. I ended up playing drums with you. I never played drums properly. Drums? You were playing <laughs> drums, us man. Yeah, my yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The first band beaches out there, man. <laughs> Our drummer. First man drummer. Cave man, cave man drummer. He used to stand up and play drums. As I sit down, I swear. No, no, no. That's the way, lah. Man, stand up and play drums. You were standing up playing drums. Dodge off the jungle. Those bad times. Yeah, remember? Uh, I think one of the first the first gig was at King Studio in PJ. Remember? There was all uh, yes. these. Yes, so King Studio at Studio. So you <coughs> have to say, talk, tell them about what happened just before the gig. So this guy mm. whom I knew through um, your well, you have this other band called Maharaja Commission. You've got. Alex and Faris there, and my sister knew Faris. You know Subang Jaya. We all I grew up in Subang Jaya, and like that, that's a small place back then. And uh, I hung out with Faris, and I met Alex, which your your drama. My wife is asking me why I'm shitless. Yeah, you might not say. Man, I'm just gonna take off my shirt, lah. It's the first question we were okay. asking as well. No, yeah, I'm just gonna take off my shit. Ben, the... oh god, see what you started, Ben. You oh, wow. you started. <laughs> All right, cool, one right? down, three more to go. <laughs> hey, y'all also take off your shit. Okay, have, no I people. Off my, have I take off my <laughs> shit? Gra- start blinding people. <laughs> Gradually, I'm, not all the time. My wife threw me a shit. I'll be overexposed if I take off my shit. <laughs> right, my wife threw me a shit. Back I'm, a rebel. Is that, is that... I'm a rebel, good, so I'm good. gonna throw it back Man. at her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what you're gonna do. <laughs> yeah. Um. So where was that? Yeah. So Alex, yeah, Alex, Asmil, Alex, Asmil, Alex Asmil's friend, uh, <laughs> my sister's friend, who is also Asmil's friend, and through Alex, 
Azmil became the drummer because uh, Alex was sick. As Alex was Azmil's drummer in Maharaja Commission, and he got sick before the gig, like a day before the gig, and he was like, <laughs> "I'm really sick." I uh, but I got this other guy. He can play drums. I was like, "Oh, okay, thank, thank God for that because the gig is tomorrow." And we got us. We got us. <laughs> Alex is bullshit. Yeah, I think it's, he was just bullshitting. This is a method of networking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Asmil, yeah. did you did you practice or did you just wing the whole session? No, we went jamming and then like, we hey guys, once, yeah. Once. I, I didn't even know how to like fix the hi hat. There was skits, skits in the in in the in the in the set like that first gig. It had it yeah. contained skits like most of our shows. Uh, had like banter with the audience and so this like, was some sort of pre commentary and Korea. stand up and stuff. Pre, so, pre, yeah, this was pre yeah, panda, pre panda, <laughs> pre -panda head curry, but it had panda like a curry. like a short, really bodo skit, like a stupid, <laughs> like almost on like um how you, there was this old like skit show on TV three called Scenario. Maybe yeah. lower oh, than oh lower than that, much more lower than that. <laughs> yeah. So so like like one of the skits we did like at our second show is like we prepared some chocolate and we said that this was shit. And my and the CK <laughs> said that you took a shit and this is shit. And we're gonna give Azmil eat it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice. It was Cadbury, man. I was stoned. Yeah, it was yeah, Cadbury something. and all that. I had a munchies. Know, that was that blue it. planet. <laughs> Yeah, people are weird. Like, God, you what you trying to do? You can play music to us or tell us jokes. Yeah, I remember we we were on the set with one buck shot. Then you know, Raul was kind oh, yeah. of chubby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Still a oh, kid, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> now they all like toned and handsome. You know, last time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big movers <laughs> and shakers in the scene. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Raul and uh, Raul from and, B. And, uh, yeah, Raul yeah, from yeah, B. yeah, yeah. He was still a kid then, man. <laughs> so Raul is from this band called One Buck Shot. One Buck Shot, yeah. Yeah. I've never seen them. There's another punk band here. And um so uh what they ha what happened? So uh we played our first gig. How was the first gig like? It was a good gig. I remember that. It was, it was fun. Fun, really fun. I think uh yeah. I actually man, woke up that, that morning with a fever too, actually. If that was yeah, like, if that was one gig for me to remember, I would remember that one gig. Yeah, so you woke up with a fever as well. Yeah, but then after the gig, yeah, but after the show was better. Yeah, after the show, like good, I sweat, I'm cool now. Yeah, but you guys were very serious. You guys were like straight away, let's record albums, and that was cool, man. <laughs> yeah. See, that's why it was. That was so. Uh, was on. Yeah, so before uh the gig, um during my college days, uh Jason, who became our guitarist later, uh. He recorded some songs with me, uh, that became Ben's Bitches songs, um, some very early Ben's Bitches songs, some that we didn't play, play as well, and uh, he we recorded it on a four track, uh, in his house. I was singing when his mom was walking around. There was a song called the Fuck Up <laughs> Fucked Up song, and the chorus goes, "I'm so fucked up, you're so fucked up, we are all fucked up." Da, da. And his mom is going around, going, I'm so fucked up. So <laughs> Mom's walking around the house doing house chores and all that. Yeah. 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 So it, it had this really weird sound, like, you know, because I was holding back not to offend yeah. the mom. And um, yeah, so I, I, I we managed to bounce that digitally onto a CD. I made copies of that CD, bought CDRs and made copies of it. And photos started the cover, like the soft, you know, the soft floppy covers that you put CDs in, yeah. like the pirates do. And uh, it was the first EP. It, it was called uh, Bigger Than the Beatles, Cheaper Than the Pirates. Bigger Than the <laughs> Beatles, Cheaper Than the Pirates. Uh, and uh, we, I cut out, I got CK to print out, uh, because he had a color printer. So like they uh, print out all these uh, thumbnails of, uh, from a porn site. So all these small thumbnails of naked women and men, <laughs> and uh, we cut them out and we st stuck them like a stamp at the back of the cover. That is pure punk rock. How were you not? <laughs> how were you not put in prison? 
uh, I don't know because maybe I only made like uh, 10 or 20 pieces for that first show and we sold them at like 3 bucks a pop. And, yeah, it was uh, completely sold out, man. You know, like you, you go like, I mean, this is like, this, this was like even before the days of like the, like, good streaming and stuff like that right where yeah. you expect people to buy cds right you go to tables and you see like oh nobody's of buying course, any yeah. of the merchandise and then like we were like oh we sold out everything at three dollars <laughs> because we undercut <laughs> the whole market ha 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 you and then the nipples. second one was the second one was nibble the nibble the nipple the nibble album the remember we, we yeah, went to yeah. sae and yeah. That was weird, man. Remember there was this guy without a hand? Was was a student there? What? There was this guy there was a kid who was studying something and he didn't oh, have yeah, a hand. Yeah, yeah. So he's in the another booth and it was just like his legs and we were setting up drums in this smaller room. Yeah, I had no we idea recorded, to set up drums too. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we recorded <laughs> another um uh EP This guy was using his legs to Yeah, he was like literally without without I don't want to simulate it because. <laughs> oh, no. Offensive. But he was using his legs like, to like uh, control yeah, everything. Legs. Yeah, and respect the knobs and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And, uh, cool. I, I can't remember his name, but he engineered some of our songs. Uh, my friend did a couple others, and uh, it was just basically their project or something like that. Uh, we used the tracks, and then we came out with the second EP, which is called the Nipple EP. Nipple. <laughs> <laughs> and uh oh no it's called nibble the nipple yeah, yeah. nibble the nipple hey brendan come yeah. on show me your nipple now straight, straight <laughs> <up>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> guys just join just get on the bandwagon and take your shirts off no <laughs> i join my house kid i'm a wolf not a sheep recorded that shit. yeah record it and and then we recorded the album, National Disservice, because National yeah. Service was just introduced. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, when was uh, this by 2005? 2004. Four. Four. Eight. Yeah. 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 2000 the album was recorded in 2003, right? 2003. Right oh. after we played our first gig, we started working on songs to record for the first album, but we released another EP before that. Like okay, right after the gig we record we recorded the second EP and then right after the second EP we, we worked on songs for the for the album. It was a very productive time and uh the band was like uh, brought brought a lot of joy, I guess, to my life. Good. Yeah. Mm. Happy, happy mm. days. Mm. 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 <laughs> nice stuff. And then we recorded the 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 the, 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 the that, that album, uh National Disservice. Uh uh, CK wrote Kotak Babulu, which became a very huge hit. Uh, yeah. It was the last, last track on that album, <clears throat> sort of a hidden track. And he put it up on uh, iBands, which was sort of like a, a very, like, like that's my band, my space, and we won that as well. Uh, lots of followers or whatever at the time. And then, like, uh, there was um, this other local version of MySpace for bands, which is called iBands. I, I sort of remember. And remembered. Uh, we crashed that website with Kotak Babulu because uh, yeah, man. We over, over <laughs> a million downloads of that song. A million downloads? Uh, over yeah. a million downloads? Yeah. 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 And, uh, CK was very bitter because you couldn't monetize it then. <laughs> He's like, yeah, he was very yeah, bitter. Yeah, yeah. He was you couldn't make money from it. So he was so angry. What the fuck? It sucks. <laughs> uh, I'm so sucks. Like <laughs> I'm sucks. <laughs> Is Kote Berbulu is, is, is Harry Cock. That's Harry Cock. <laughs> Harry yeah. Janetu. So it was done yeah, in the yeah. in the in the style of like uh of of uh, of, of they call it rock kiwang, rock kang kang, uh, rock kappa. Like this mm. kind of couple of different genres that that they are slightly different and all that, and it's kind of like a power ballad. <laughs> uh, done in minor key, like a very sad sound like that, but power ballad. Really Malaysians like the... I love their power yeah. ballads. Yeah, 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 it's very, very, it's a, yeah, it was like, a, it was a time, you know, in, in even Malaysia. The, even if they buy Harry Cox, we still love the power ballads. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now you know, hair bands and all that, you know, so like he wrote that song, it's a very funny song, Harry Cox, and it was in Malay, and like that, it was a hit. So I guess another thing was that uh, we were, kind of like a Chinese fronted band that 
sung in Malay. Uh, CJ used to sing in Chinese as well, and like you know, it was to be sang in Malay English, and it's like a very, uh, it's a very fun, fun kind of thing, lah. Because like I, I do, I, I haven't heard <laughs> anything like that, you know. And we were creating it, and I was like, oh, this is cool, man. Yeah. And then today, today you can actually turn on and see this uh, very hot rising uh, rapper, local rapper. Her name is Zamira. I think she signed on Yuna's Records yeah, and all that. And she's she dropped the song for Old Town Man, uh, which is yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> you know, it's 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 a fast food brand in Malaysia. Uh, you know, a local food brand in Malaysia, restaurant chain restaurant, and like she rapped in like four different languages and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, that's good. Somehow I'm responsible for that. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking credit, aren't we? <laughs> okay, yeah. guys. I, th- I, know, being yeah, okay. <laughs> I was just saying that, man. I, just I think saying, it's a, I think it's a good space to uh, stop for the first break, and uh, <laughs> in the second half of the show, we'll we'll move into the craziness that is Panda Head Curry and your career in, in, in oh. as an editor. So, like, so we'd okay. like to say goodbye for the first half, and we will see you in the second half. Cheers! Thank I, you. I, I enjoy yeah. how chronological. And we're back with the sec- second half of uh, the episode with Mr. Ben Leo. <laughs> so, uh, up, man? The night <laughs> progresses. <laughs> the clothes come off. Yeah. It's, it should be like yeah. it should be like it should be like American Werewolf in London. Stick, stick, stick to the roads, guys. Stick to the roads. Little, 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 little. Bottomless. Yeah. I'm really completely nude, actually. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, Ben. Uh, that's information we did not need to know. Nah, eating. Yeah, it's trying to warm. I open my shirt too, la. It's kind of hot, man. Yeah, but the night progresses. Shit, comes <laughs> off. Ah, two is, down, two more to go. This, this is gonna be an epic episode, yeah, la, man. Yeah, definitely took a strange turn. <laughs> All right, for Ben's bitches. Hey, I'll swear to God, bitches. All right, man. Yeah, anyway, it's hot, so, man. We're yeah, trying to shut this, this club. We'll move on. Eddie. Wow. Eddie. Yeah. I'm telling Take you, across <laughs> Malaysia right on, now, no. this is the default uh, attire. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere yeah, actually, you go. To be, really, to be really true, true for you guys, right? It's a hot country. Oh like, God, I'm Irish. <laughs> hey, come on, like, come on. Guys, it hey, was 25 saving... fucking Sorry. degrees today, you know, this morning. Hey, we save, we're saving the environment, man. Wash less clothes, you know? Just wash panda. <laughs> Don't, don't waste water. So Ben, why don't you yeah. why don't you just lead us into the story of how the 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 hydra that is uh Panda Head Curry formed? Uh Panda Head Curry formed after I met Raphael. Um aka Lord Panda. Um, Lord Panda. Yeah, we, we, we have we have uh like Again, alter egos in uh, Panda Head Curry. So I'm General Panda, comma the. Um, well, we we formed after I met him at the gig uh, that Ben Speeches was playing at, at Paul's place. Uh, very old, I guess the first Paul's place at Uptown, before he yeah. moved to Oakland Road. Um, yeah, Wang's place. Yeah. Uh, uh played i was drunk i tripped over some wires or the monitor and i crashed through a screen and went into the toilet that was the That's album I... launch man that, that was the national service album launch it was yeah okay and it was just, okay. it was just me me it was kai remember kai playing played hey, no kai didn't even play the bass it's just you and me ck his grandpa died oh so okay he didn't... And, yeah, he... and there was also no, a wait, wait, no, point no, wait, wait, you jumped through studying... ck uh, yeah, there's CK also a point there. that there's also a point where CK was studying in Australia, so he wasn't around for uh, some time. So, yeah. uh, Kai Mano, bassist, singer, frontman, uh, Kai, Kai Baha, now film director, he did Chua, and um, I acted in one of his oh. shows. Me, CK acted in uh, one of his Slug. early oddball 
his early oddball movie lah that didn't get popular. The rest of his movie movies got popular. So we are. Hey, but I was in the cinemas, man. You were in the cinemas, oh, yeah, yeah. man. I was in the cinemas for like one day or two days. <laughs> but the other movies were like, I guess, more popular and uh, yeah. Um, Kai Baha I was playing bass for us and uh, so I tripped over something, fell into the toilet and then um, um, yeah, the toilet was just right next to the stage so like tripped over something, crashed through the screen and uh, fell into the toilet and then uh, You're two Rafael, inches from the sink, you know, your head, man. Yeah. And then <laughs> Rafael, uh, Rafael met up, we met up with, uh, met, met Rafael after the gig and uh basically became friends. He was in another he was in a band called uh three hundred sixty degree head rotation. They were a good band, man. Great band. Yeah. Yeah, exhaustious. Three hundred and sixty three sixty, yeah. My mouthful, yeah. you know. Three hundred and sixty mm-hmm. degree head rotation. Were, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I should say something rough is bad, but uh three sixty they were quite they were quite scary. Rafi was quite scary. This big size. Uh, what sort of music was it? Kind, kind, of, kind of middle age guy. Yeah. <laughs> At the time, yeah. yeah. How would you like, describe uh, his music, man? Yeah. What would you uh, describe? Uh, it was. Well, it had punk in it. It was. It was loud and raw and aggressive, but at the same time, like a uh, kind of grungy and also the the guitarist, uh, Jack Nadin was a very. Uh, Late Jack, uh, late Jack Nadin was 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 a superb guitarist who loved uh, Jimi Hendrix and emulated mm. style of that bluesman style of playing to another level and uh, with that like it's very powerful I, and and I and I felt some of that when 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 we had Jason uh, in the band as well Jason is our guitarist who's uh, currently is, has migrated to Australia. Also another uh, accomplished underrated, yeah. super underrated. Like wow, you know, he's with a powerful guitarist. You know, it's like you they deliver fifty to eighty percent of the of the band's sound actually. But, you know. but if you look at him, you, anyway, you, anyway. <laughs> yeah. What are you saying? Uh, you know, so are you are you and Rafael the only permanent members of Underhead Curry? And and then uh, uh, yeah, we, we also, no, it was a duo. So uh, we were doing um. Uh, acoustic songs. Uh, um, I would use a microphone sometimes, like a, a hailer, and uh, and um, I would do what you call extreme miming, which is basically shouting out. You know, like a mime is in a box like that. I would go like, Ah, I'm in a box. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and uh, we'd sing all this very. Op- Offensive songs, songs that would probably songs the songs that still would get you into trouble today. But I guess like you know, it's done in a funny and satirical way. That, One of my uh, favorites is uh, Singapore belongs to Malaysia. I think that's yeah, Singapore belongs to Malaysia. Still current, still very current. That's the evergreen. <laughs> Singapore belongs to Malaysia. Chinese go back to China. <laughs> It's in the news. <laughs> Still. What you I saw think I saw Panda Head Curry perform this at Monday Curry. Oh, like yeah, what? <laughs> What's the song that he's uh, walk about the, the arena? Rafael walks about the arena. He's all kind of oh, doing. yeah. I mean, the Kang Kung. No, oh, no, yeah. no. It's not the Kang Kung show. I mean, it's it's the one where they have like, you know. Vegetarian. Y- yeah. Vegetarian. No, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is yeah, the, yeah, monkeys, yeah, yeah, yeah. the monkeys have taken over. Oh. <laughs> Okay, okay. So I gotta explain it. So like, uh, so basically, it started as a two-piece folk, uh, folk punk thing, comedy. We would make fun of politics and uh, everything. Uh, homosexuals. We don't care whether they are left or right. You know, we whack everything. And but it's it's basically the the image of the band was like this very confusing image. Like I was supposed to be a a proud. Uh, nationalists. I don't know how you would say it. <laughs> how, how you? Do, how would? How that, 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 that's ab, that's ab, a nationalist. Yeah. Yeah, proud nationalist lah. Like yeah, like Perkasa kind of nationalist like that. <laughs> yeah. Not pejuang, I'm a pejuang, eh? you know. I'm a pejuang. <laughs> Before there was yeah. pejuang, yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and, uh, uh um, um a lot of uh, yeah a lot of stuff and then we, we sort of changed during the third album a, a little bit like uh his daughter Rafael's daughter Irina started <clears throat> playing with us more and yeah uh on drums and saxophone and chicken and and we had some... the rubber chicken the rubber chicken, yeah, and a, and a rubber chicken and singing as well. <laughs> yeah, and then we recorded songs as uh, a lot of weird bands. We did a compilation of uh, foreign bands. We recorded ourselves. Okay, there was a magazine called Junk. Junk magazine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Going, back to, going, back to the, going back to the first part of this conversation, of this podcast, when I said that uh, it, it was a time where it was easy for people to uh, make it well. Like the music press back then would feature just about any like local band, yeah. right? and I think like right now they also kind of just about feature any local band. But uh, uh, so they they would <laughs> they would ask bands to curate songs and stuff like that. So they asked Panda Hit Curry to curate a, a playlist, and it would come in a CD. Uh, oh no! I will come online or something like that. No, it was a CD. It was, it was, was the CD. I think it was a CD. Was the CD it? was yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it a CD? No, it wasn't I a CD. The CD was oh, something else. The CD was a band's bitches song on a compilation oh, on the CD. Oh okay. We okay. gave a band's bitches song for a compilation on the CD, but then they asked Panda Hit Curry to curate a list of uh. Of music, the curator curate a list a a, a, a <laughs> playlist for for their Halloween show. Uh, and we curated a list of bands from around the world, which were us recording ourselves as those bands around the world. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> I remember this. You, you made up. Yeah. You made up a whole list of. I just we bands. just made up like oh, that's yeah. this band from like uh, Papua New Guinea uh, called the Kuru. <laughs> Papa called the Kuru. They they eat people and all that. Ate and the whole like, band. <laughs> 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 yeah, one <laughs> member ate the whole band, and um, they uh, they just basically, you know, while well, we just recorded songs and like you know, we don't we don't know what's the language they speak in Papua New Guinea pidgin, right? I think. Yeah, so. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you 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 had a Cambodian Sorry. band. You even had a Cambodian yeah. band. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, basically, so, like, we had a Russian band <laughs> and all that. A Russian man, you know, you know, no, no, no. So Jung didn't know, right? Jung didn't know at all. I, I don't know. <laughs> they published it. Yeah, they published it, man. With all the fake bio and photos. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, though. Oh man. <laughs> Yes. So, anyways, by the way, where we were, where we, uh, then basically, uh, the panda head curry um, became a musical band. Like we did a musical uh, for the latest album, maybe about five years ago. <laughs> I don't know. Like it was a while back, but <clears throat> um, it was a sci-fi musical about how the world was coming to an end because human beings were too dumb to fix technology and everything was falling apart. They had become a generation of users. You know, everybody was so into themselves. And uh, the animals and took it, over yeah. and all that. And that's why you get the Kang Kong and yeah. stuff. Correct. Yeah. Oh, man. And the, and the, what an experience, the, like, for sure. <laughs> hey, the science is pretty legit, you know, because uh, Rafael's an engineer, so. A Malay oh, yeah. engineer. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Man, until today, I can remember that old... I mean, I've seen so many shows happen at Murdy Karya, but the Panda Hit Curry show was just something else. Like oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Experience. Wait, wait, what, what show was that? Where, it was, where, where? It was in the kitchen, and I it's see... The like, first you know, it's the first show. It's the first like Panda Hit Curry Lewis show. show. The Jeffrey Lewis show, we organized this, and then, like... <laughs> this was <laughs> the opening for him. For him. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, you're saying. No, th th there was this one show no, no. I still remember watching uh, at Murdy Curry. It was a Panda Hit um, Curry show. And Amrita Soon's sister 
was like walking around with like an umbrella, you know. She's just turning around this umbrella and just walking all the way to the back and then coming to the front. And somebody <laughs> was like on a healer and stuff. Ah. Oh. Oh, it's the meteorite. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. That's the, the meteorite, meteorite comes yeah. down. That's a song. Soul, I think. Yeah, that's a song. Yeah, that's a song. An umbrella. What's it? An umbrella? Downfall no, I think of humanity. Was... Yeah, was it was a ball, the umbrella. Dude. The umbrella is the meteorite. Yeah, yes, they got it. Yep. Yes. Yep. Come on, guys. But Use ben... your imagination. <laughs> Oh, then yeah. you also had some sort of a ball, I think. Was it a disco ball that you were holding? <laughs> yes, that so- that was for the Large Hadron Collider. That's the song called. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you don't know what that is, please Google it. Okay, <laughs> that, it has to do with the end just, of the world. Just Google CERN and the and the <laughs> opening up of a wormhole in CERN. <laughs> So uh, you're the editor um, of Juice Magazine. How did how did your foray into uh, editing begin? Uh, <laughs> I started in Juice as a writer in 2008, and uh, I became an editor after a couple of years or so. And um, well, it, it was a printed magazine that used to cover. Uh, the local music scene and pop culture, fashion. This would cover a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, some people would describe it as a hipster magazine, but as you can see, I'm very far from a hipster. Yeah. Uh, well, before you join, I, I, it was. I, 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 before you join, it was. <laughs> yeah, and 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 just as a disclaimer, I'm neither a punk. No, a hipster. So, uh, I am Chinese. That's why. I, I, that that is why I get to sing the song "Singapore Belongs to Malaysia." Okay. And, um, uh, <clears throat> what else? Like, uh, yeah. Well, I I started there and became editor. And uh, what can I say, man? I guess like, uh, career-wise, um, it's. It's been an interesting ride, but <clears throat> all if, if the saying "all good things must come to an end," then I guess for me that that has to be a, a print because when print died, uh, going online was very difficult and very uh, tedious for for myself. But after a while, you know, you learn you learn the ropes and all that, and. Uh, you know, we've actually multiplied our audience since the print days because obviously online reaches so many more people and yeah, so much uh, easier to yeah and just and, and just like you know, like uh, what it's gonna be our like I lost count, but it's almost twenty years or maybe short of about three to four years to you know maybe it's about sixteen or seventeen years old. Yeah, and then, uh, and having a brand around for that long, I guess you know it's a it's pretty good. That's a, that's a pretty good thing, man. Especially to go, for, especially go from print to digital and still. Oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Because you can see so that. many of them, like you know, so just, many uh, fell by the way. So closing like, shop, like yeah. uh, Q Magazine in the UK, they're closing down. Yeah, closing down, man. They were one uh, of the big ones. What magazine? Q. Q, Q magazine. The big, and the, like, Q. Along with it, along with the enemy. They were probably the two. Yeah. Big, like oh yeah. Indie magazine. Crazy man. Okay. And Q had very good writing. It was c- kind of more compared to the enemy, which is more kind of like tabloid yeah. indie. Q was more like the, yeah. the Financial Times of indie. It was very well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, very yeah. well published magazine. So it was. Um, Always enjoy reading. So it's it. probably it's probably a good time to th- ask you what you think of the current state of music in Malaysia, since you've you've, you've been around a long time and, and your job is to kind of like um, talk about it. What's your views on the current state of music <laughs> in Malaysia? The music scene in Malaysia. To be honest <laughs> with you, <clears throat> the reason why uh, it well print died because print died, but then Juice's content as uh, a street culture, cool hipster, whatever you want to call it, like music. Well, okay, let's talk about local music. Juice's 
uh, uh, focus on local music and all that had to change because you wouldn't be able to pull in the numbers with local music. That's how much people care about local music. They don't. Because when you run something, and sometimes you do get some some views, but like you're talking about what digital is like how many how many articles a year? Maybe like you're doing like ten yeah. a day, yeah. ten a day mm-hmm. times three hundred sixty five. That's fucking like you know <laughs> three, three and a half. Three thousand. What is it? Three thousand and six hundred fifty articles yeah. in a year, right? Okay, so if you got three thousand six hundred fifty articles a year, would you consider maybe ten music articles that? made it that brought in a lot of numbers would you call that a significant amount uh that you should hire a writer to come in specifically to write about local music mm, that's why man it, it makes up less than one percent of of what whatever works online what yeah. works is news that would reach that number of clicks and if you don't get that number of clicks you don't get advertisers you don't get yeah. your click through through your banner ads and stuff like that and basically you're mm. broke yeah. and you're out of a job and you become like one of those uh, print magazines that shut down. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter on, online or print. If you, do, if you don't make money, you don't make money and you shut down. And, and hence, uh, that's why it had to change from like a, a solely like culture, pop culture magazine into this whole news site uh, that co- curates and compiles a bit of everything for the modern day reader, I guess, you know, mm, for the person mm. on the go, the urban reader, you know. Do you think the, the, so? Think the, the that's what it is, you know, you can cover anything under the sun nowadays, but you know, what, 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 what are those 10 stories that you're going to give to the reader today? Do you think that's, the local that's about music, it. Do you think the local music scene could do anything to get a more regular, bigger audience that, that would click on it? Or do you think it's just the apathy of the the Malaysian audience that I, just don't care about local music? I can't say, I can't advise what other musicians should do or what other artists should do. I only know that people are looking for something different. And... If you can't be different, you can be yourself, but yourself needs to be an amplified version of that, you know? So if you're like a boring person who likes to sit at home and like, uh, I don't know, mope about, and if you're that, if you're that boring person, then uh, you just need to amplify that persona when you're on stage. And like... Uh, what you may call it, uh, uh, become born Ivor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, you have to amplify it. But I, I'm, I don't know. I, I'm not saying that the quality is bad. I'm just saying that the marketing, the packaging yeah. is not completely there. If it was, then yeah. But then again, Malaysian taste is very specific. So, if you market it too broadly it might not do so well locally mm. and then there's that whole there's so many arguments to it you know there's that whole that the many layers to it there's that whole argument where you need to uh you need to be famous to become famous i understand what you it's mean it's not a chicken and egg yeah. like that like <laughs> yeah. when i was when i was like uh, i was you need to be infamous to become famous yeah, something like that. Well, m- well, in in the sense that you need more general, like you just need to, uh, you need to make it somewhere. Okay, more directly, you need to make it somewhere else before you make it mm. back home, because um, without awards, nobody at home wants to talk to you. Yeah, or without mm. accolades or something like that. It's like when I was in uh, the states for an assignment. Uh, uh, when I was working. Uh, uh, where basically they sent me for for a media event and um was in New York and people were telling me that uh you need to be big before you go to New York to make it big you need to be big somewhere else first mm. and that's kind of like Malaysia I guess 
like mm-hmm. like you have to be somebody overseas making a name for yourself and then come back here i understand i don't yeah, know yeah. why it's like that yeah it's, but but yeah. that seems to work i don't i don't yeah. think i don't think i'm sure there are people that are, that are not big anywhere else but malaysia you know but course, the other way works as well yeah So Ben, you since you're talking about this, I I I think one of uh, Juice's recent most recent article was about Yuna. Hmm. Yeah, I mean yeah? that's an example as well. I think yeah. like when she, if 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 she stayed in Malaysia, and when she was around in Malaysia, she did not get the same exposure that she did as she did as yeah. she does now. It's like yeah. once you make it there, it's like whoa, you know? Okay, proud. Never heard mm. of you before, but I'm proud like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I just read about a a, a whiskey, a Malaysian own. Yeah, Malaysian yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that right. won something overseas, and it was like, oh, yeah. yeah. But you can't find it in Malaysia. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. it's, it, it's sold overseas actually. But people, are, yeah, 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 yeah. So what? You that de- you've never drank it, you know? Exactly. It's one hundred. One hundred and ninety bucks. Fucking ringgit. Wait, what? Yeah, mahal. Yeah, I'm not made for the peat. Maybe she's made for the peat that 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 causes the haze. Yeah, I think we find. I think I think. But I would write to them and ask them. Yeah, ask them to send you a show. Hey guys, you want to sponsor a show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sponsor local, local blend. But then, but then you need, but then you gotta kick me out of the show, lah. I'm the halal one. You're only like you know. You're only uh, like uh, <laughs> halal and tak halal if you if you, if you believe it lah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you lah, but other things lah. But food that it got halal and not halal lah. But yourself is like you. Know, what am I talking about, man? I'm kosher, man. I'm kosher. Okay. I have a song called Aku Tak Su uh, Tak Mau Sunat. You know, there's a song called <laughs> Aku Tak Mau Sunat. I don't want to get circumcised. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, all your, it's, it's all your song. Like, it's all your song. Actually, like Rafi penises. wrote that, so a Malay guy wrote that song, and then he passed it to a Chinese guy to sing. <laughs> yeah, you you check that. You check that. Guilty by association. Okay, guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th- I think we will call the day there. Uh, so we usually let the guests give the last minute just to what what you've got coming up, music wise or career wise, Ben. So like, you just like to take the last minute and just tell us what's going on in your life at the moment, and then. We'll call the day after that. Oh man, there's <laughs> actually nothing much to say. I want to say a lot of things that I'm working on, but you know, I think I should just yeah, just like just like leave you the mystery <laughs> for all for now because like I I mean like I I've been writing some stuff. I don't do much music anymore, and I don't uh uh I don't. Write features and I, I I focus more on editing right now. Yeah. But um, uh, I I do try to write like uh scripts for stories and stuff like that, and uh, it's challenging because uh it's a new thing and uh, obviously you know lots of thought into it, different things you know and uh mar- I'm married um uh I have a wife and. House now, <laughs> not a rented house, but a house that real, I actually have to pay mortgage. Yeah. Real, 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 yeah, <laughs> real life <laughs> fucking responsibilities. I have to pay for my own Awful. car park every year. Uh, so <laughs> that's the kind, of, that's the kind of things I have to deal with, you know. And uh, uh, you know, man, I think like uh, we are all kind of uh, um. Pulling through right now, you know. Yeah, we're just and, surviving during this. Yeah. Okay, yeah. guys. And, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. We'll leave it at that. So, I would like to thank mm-hmm. Ben Lou for being our guest this week. I've been Derek Rush with uh, Asmil Yuner, uh, Brendan the Cruz, <laughs> and Fabian Mark Peter. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Have a good evening. <laughs> <laughs>